What's up you guys? It's Lauren Delisa Coleman and I have another great interview for you guys all around Mammoth Film Festival. You know nobody does it like we do here at the Inside Series for Film.io. I am pleased to bring you Monty Cole who has a really, really intriguing um, film which part of it I didn't even know like actually happened so I can't wait until he gets into it um, with you guys um, the film is called Sons of Toledo Monty welcome to the inside series hi it's so glad to be here I am very happy to have you so let's um, kick it off as we always do with a quick synopsis of your film Sons of Toledo yeah, um, the film is about um, Mark, a black barber in Toledo, who finds out that his brother was killed and he has to go to a normal day of work as a barber in Toledo. And over the course of the day, you realize he has something important he has to do, and that is he has to go and cut his brother's hair um, before he is um, buried or cremated. And that is a real thing that um, barbers have to do in this country that I didn't know. Um, uh, I live here in Chicago and um, uh, I told my barber about it. He's like, yeah, they tried to get me to do that and I just couldn't do it. Uh, but Mark, who this is his first time acting um, and this is his first role, uh, feels like it's his duty. And so the guts of the film is a documentary in which the community of Toledo gets to talk about what's happening there, the joys and the beauty of Toledo and also the ugliness of the city. And in, inside of that documentary, there's this narrative story as well. I think is just really brilliant how you brought all this together. And so, yeah, I didn't, I'm glad I'm like you're saying it too, cause I'm thinking, okay, does everybody know that people or men get their hair cut before, you know, I guess a viewing, right? If you have an open right. casket funeral, right. if you don't, obviously that doesn't make a difference. But yeah, it's just something I never, thought about um and then to kind of put it in the context of um i don't know not just death but like socioeconomic issues and cultural issues and bias etc around all that is really like a a full rich meal how did you decide to do all this monty how did this story come to you I, so I have to give credit first and foremost to uh, my collaborator, Matt Foss, who uh, co-wrote the film. He he wrote the film uh, and sent it to me and uh, and I was just so moved by it. Um, uh, you know, Chicago and Toledo are not so far apart. I mean, this And that's like, not something I didn't know either, right? right. That, that it was a little bit hectic in Toledo. Yeah, and, and you know, I think that to be honest, um, COVID has only heightened things. Mm -hmm. I think the last two years, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. have gotten uh, worse, and um, and this community of barbers in Toledo are specifically holding them up, and 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 you know, and there are they're mentoring the kids that come through, and I saw it firsthand. There's so many things in it that, like, when you watch it, you're like, oh wow, is that over dramatic? Um, or is like, wow, that's a really powerful shot. Is that? And it's literally us just showing the truth. It's literally just me trying to show, uh, and Matt trying to show what, what we've seen and how we've been listening to the city. What was the most challenging thing um, around being able to bring this story to light? <laughs> everything being, besides everything. <laughs> well, on one hand, if I'm being honest, it blew my mind from the very beginning how much Toledo opened its arms to us. Like, uh, I've never seen a movie get raised money that fast. I've never seen, there's the, this very ambitious last shot in the film and uh, it required us to shut down the largest bridge in Toledo. And when Matt went about doing that, he asked the mayor and the police department and they were like, yeah, of course. What do you need? What do you need? The de in that same day, we have a bunch of black, like a, I would say 30 black men that are coming through and they provided us a van that gave vaccines to the black men in the town. So it also served this double duty as both like this filmmaking, the storytelling, and also this community work at the same time. So it, it blew my, there'd be moments where I'd be like, that apartment there, it'd be really great if we could shoot in that apartment there. And Matt would be like, 
okay, let me see. And then the next day, I'd be like, hey, we got the apartment. And I'd be like, ha, ha, what, what? And we'd be, there's so many moments like that. I can tell you where uh, it's probably just so much. I mean, hell, the mayor of Toledo is ordering a burrito in the middle of the film. <laughs> like, it's just crazy. Isn't it amazing, uh, then, I guess, how, and you know, we never really understand the importance, I think, of seeing ourselves. Yes, exactly. Back. Exactly. Um, and I guess how people can open up to that if you're going to, to show that. Because, I mean, when's the last time, honestly, anybody's spoken about Toledo? Ohio, you you know it's a city that exists. No, exactly. but like I said, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I like I didn't know it was like rough there or anything like that. Sure. So yeah, so I guess that's that's why. So you had complete smooth sailing from beginning to end, Monty. You no, got to be the I only mean, filmmaker on earth then. <laughs> no, because the other part of it is obviously COVID, and I would say the other other part of it is that of except for one actor, Maddie Porter, who's great and from Detroit and played the mom. Uh, everyone in the act, in the film are are people they're, right. they're, who've never acted before and are, are playing themselves. And so we shot it over a week because, I mean, we probably could have done the three day craziness, but like we shot it over a week because we wanted to allow them to live their lives and be able to catch them when we catch them. Um, and so, and then and once we were still funny, the, f- the film a little bit more stylistically, we went back and did some reshoots of it. So like, it, it really was, um, and then there was a quick turnaround for it because um, the film is being used so utilitarian, like it, it, it has a purpose, like it's being used in the community to talk about these issues. Mm. And so, and all, like last week, um, the barbershop community had, uh, they did a screening of it and they gave out free cuts to the community as people, as people. Oh, watched. that's so nice. So yeah. nice. This must be like so rewarding on so many different levels. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your background and you are um, represented by, you know, WME, you, you know, so like no joke. Tell <laughs> me a little bit about your, your journey. Yeah. I mean, t- I was a theater director primarily uh, Matt and I know each other from theater. Uh, both of us are sort of traversing now into new waters, um, relatively speaking. I went to, um, you know, I went to Emerson College and then uh, Cal Arts, and for you know, as long as I can remember, I was making um, shorts and small films with people, but never to like to a certain level of um, budget. And so it was always almost like uh, I was like. Oh my god, that film thing is so much fun. I love doing it so much, like with my friends. But anyways, let me go back to doing my real thing in theater, uh-huh. and then and I've risen to a certain level of success in theater. But in the back of my mind, I've always been like, oh man, I really should be doing that film thing. That film thing is really where my heart's at. That's like, I think that's even when I direct theater, it's like it is so cinematic. I should probably be doing. And so I've kind of spent the last few years really trying to jump in and learn as much as possible. And so this last summer I shot Sons of Toledo, uh, another f- brilliant short by uh, Isaac Gomez, who's a fantastic, prolific, award-winning playwright and, and writer um, called Six Feet Apart that's in post-production now. And then one that I wrote and directed for myself about my own childhood story called Whole, and that's in post-production too. So now there's like this kind of surge of short films that are coming out. I'll as say. I, as I, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, that are gonna all be hitting the festival circuit at different times. It was times. all like backed up during the theater days. Yeah, and right. And I was like, wow, ah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So how did um, the whole William Morris scenario uh, come to be? Yeah, so that came, uh, <laughs> I, I had uh, a, a friend, Lord Jackman, who uh, uh, writes for all sorts of TV shows and um, is killing it right now. She have, she just sold to Netflix and to uh, uh, oh well, her, her two other projects are, are being bidded over. But um, uh, she um, was represented by WME, and she comes to me like, "You need to represent Monty. You need to represent Monty." Oh, that's and nice. and I and then I in return was also like. Can we talk now? Can we talk now? Can we talk now? As I receive more and more success in my career, uh, and then eventually I, I hit a certain level of success, and they were like, "Yes, okay, fine, we can talk." Uh, and since then, they've been really, really useful. I mean, and really, really helpful with me and and, and guiding me, um, uh, whether it's in theater and now as I'm 
they're like, Monty, send us that short. Oh my God. And so now they've been helping me in the film and TV realm as well. So that's really great to hear. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about how like you came to have this included at Mammoth. Yeah, I mean, um, there was just this sort of blitz of film um, film festivals that we sent it out to. Um, and we were just so excited about Mammoth because the, it's such a great opportunity for emerging filmmakers to get their shot. And not only to get their shot, but also to get the shot near LA. Um, um, for so many folks that I met, I you know I went to Cal Arts for three years, and so I had lived in LA for a while, um, and so it was just so nice to see so many folks from LA. They were like, "Hey, do you want to uh, uh, do you want to talk to that?" I I uh, I'm going to be there for a six week long residency at the Center for New Performance um, next month, and there were just so many people who were like, "Hey, let's get coffee when you're down here." Da, da, da. So um, that sort of uh, attention with the film realm was relatively new to me. So it was so nice to be able to go to that Mammoth Festival and be able to experience um, the film side of things and be able to start to network in that way. That's that's just really great to hear. I don't know, I feel like there's a real energy um, from the filmmakers who were there and everybody had a, not just like a you know good time and people saw the film or whatever, but a lot of business around it and just a lot of, I think, fulfillment and satisfaction around it. Why do you personally think um, it's like that? And do you have anything to compare it with? Like, was this your first time at Mammoth? I think so, right? No, it was, yeah, it was. And I would say that like, uh, <laughs> it was just, it would just be a camaraderie. Um, I was, I'd be standing in line for the, the second repeat and um, the filmmakers in front of me would be like, hey, like, what was your short film? And then they'd be like, I'd be like, oh, yours was that one. Oh my God, it was so good. Da, 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 da. And uh, so many people uh, have reached out to me, even on Instagram being like, hey, by the way, I saw your film and it was just so good and made me cry, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so I, it was such a nice, it, the, the support around each other um, is pretty fantastic. And I think that's part of the reason why people love it so much. That is just so amazing. So what's gonna be next for you, Monty? Because I mean, I feel like now that you put theater on the back burner, like anything <laughs> could happen, huh? Anything could happen. We'll see, I, I, so these shorts are going out. Sons of Toledo is going to the Phoenix Film Festival, the Seattle Black Film Festival. It's going to uh, a festival in Tokyo and also Moscow. Uh, I don't think I can make the international flight for those, but, but uh, we're going to continue to send those out. And same with the other two shorts. And then I'm working on two features right now. Um, one that is uh, about that is a collaged um, uh, feature film about sort of dealing with the grief and the death of my dad. And the other one is sort of tackling uh, interracial relations as like relationships as like a rom com type situation. Mm -hmm. um, and both of them are are really really exciting and like i would say like comedic with notes of melancholy and that's kind of my personality so it's yeah. nice to feel represented in my artistic work it's funny i was talking to um a filmmaker uh during sundance film festival who had a short in in that festival as well and so he's kind of coined this phrase um traumedy because um <laughs> he comes out of the the compton area yeah. and so you know of course stereotypically in some you know facets of that actually very true and so you know he's like i just didn't want it to be like a thing where like you know it's like i don't know middle-aged white people having some drama with comedy like dramedy right. i'm talking about mad trauma but there's also the funny side of that too so that's that's what he was saying and, and i just I thought it was that. very interesting because you know you can have drama but there's also obviously deeper emotion and that's also how we all too. hide that feeling. That's we hide that feeling of trauma, that feeling mm -hmm. of emotional depth through comedy, and uh, it's 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 a coping mechanism. So why shouldn't a film do that as well? Yeah, very very true. Um, I'm curious: are there parts of your your theater background that you apply to film, and then or the filmmaking experience for you that you know kind of just makes your style unique or do you kind of see them as very, very separate realms or what? No, I, I mean, okay. On one hand, I would say over the last few years, I figured out how to separate, oh, this is a story that needs to be told in a live 
communal space and therefore ah. it is over here in this theater yep, room yep, yep. and then there's like this this film thing right in which like most of the content i watch is in film especially nowadays right like theater isn't open like right so uh, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It is, but like, ooh, man, we are struggling, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, uh, but there's that. But I would say that uh, my theatricality blends into my cinema, some cinematic style. There is a sort of poetic visual style that's existing inside of this film that mm-hmm. yeah, both yeah. is ne- docu-narrative, but then suddenly you'll cut to like... Um, uh toledo talks a lot about how they're mud made made from the mud and that's this mentality of like uh, i come from nothing i come from the dirt and like uh there's a certain level of grind that makes it through to be able to make it through the life there because it's so blue collar and so rough right but also there's a beauty and a pride that comes from being mud made as well and so there's these moments where in the script it says like uh, he cradles mud in his hands like uh, a baby. He rubs it on his skin like cocoa butter. And then it'll also say, like, he scrapes the mud off his skin, like, get it off, get it off. Um, and so showing the different relationships to mud in those different ways and infusing this, like, docu-narrative with these poetic visual moments. And I think that's kind of highly theatrical in my head. Very, very true. Well, I kind of feel like you're new on your journey, but you're not, right? So- <laughs> yeah. You know, from whatever place we want to, you know, put you. What um, advice might you have to filmmakers who, I don't know, may, may be experiencing like your same scenario? I mean, we wish, you know, blowing up like this, and but maybe having had a certain um, kind of comfort and ease and expertise in another medium, and now they're moving like over here. What what have you found that's been, I don't know, just like either supportive or, or comforting or helpful to you? I feel like I've been putting myself <laughs> through my own personal film school for the last couple of years. <laughs> I feel like I have, I mean, so like there's one thing to like read a million books on it and go through the YouTube series and yada, 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 and watch a bunch of movies and figure out, oh, I like this, I don't like this, blah, 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 right? It's another thing to actually like go out and do it, right? And then there's the, there's a larger budget, which I wouldn't say like these are really large budget, but like, you know, there's, this, there's a crew, there's like a, a stat, da, da, da. What I ended up doing last winter <laughs> is I made a series called Crumbs. And what I did is basically every week I found a Chicago artist that I could collaborate with who was, you know, I, I do know Chicago artists to collaborate with because of the theater world and how, you know, relatively like established I am in that world and that community. And so I would pick another uh, Chicago artist and we'd say, like, let's make something together this week. Uh, so like safely, COVID safety, da, da, da. we'd pick a prompt, we'd write something, we'd go out, shoot it, we edit it, release I it. I love that. We did that once a week for six weeks. And if you watch like your them, own like, personal workshop, you right. better go, Monty. Good for you. Ooh, because when you're backed into a corner every week and you're like, oh, God, I've got to make something. Da, 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 on one hand, you go like uh i i want to try something out i want to experiment i want to see what this feels like i want to try this aesthetic i want to try this composition blah, blah, blah. and then on the other hand you're like if this doesn't work i'm going to do it again next week and so it kind of gets you in the flow of like i am a creator right and, and to you figure know, out who you yeah. are yeah yeah i love that as a i don't know as something that you've actually done as execution and as a tip so i'm trying to now do then my next step for me personally is I, I honestly feel like I'm about to like archive my entire Instagram account <laughs> and I just like want to uh, basically start doing narrative TikToks, not as a means of like gaining followers or whatever, but because I need to better understand my own relationship to the camera, the composition. And I just need to like put up a tripod and shoot myself and just like and just like figure out. I just want to keep um, pushing and pushing until I really become the filmmaker I think I am. So this is a perfect segue into my last question, which is going to be, how can we follow you? And you know you're going to do that TikTok thing. So let us know. You guys are getting this first here on the Inside Series. What's going to be your handle? Um, So my Instagram uh, handle is MontyXCole. Uh, and then I, I, I think my TikTok handle will be the same thing. If not, there will be a link there to my in my bio. Okay. Uh, and my website is monty-cole.com. 
Okay. You have it all on lock. I'm glad you have a website and social. I know it's not easy when you're, you know, you're already doing like so many I just things redid visually it. as well, but I just feel like to find you guys sometimes, it's like I know <laughs> mad stalking and finding and connecting this to that. And you're like, what if I wanted to buy this? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like if, help if, me if, help you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it, yes. <laughs> Monty, it's been so cool to talk with you. Do you have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, other than, um, you know, I just have to thank Matt Foss again and the city of Toledo just for um, for allowing us to capture this story and for being just incredible throughout this entire process and welcoming us back. I, I, and and just there's so many ways that are not even mentioned here. Uh, uh, every time we talk about this film, I'm like, oh God, it's not about me. Oh my God, so many people, just so many amazing things in this thing. Our, our crew, our DP from Chicago and from uh, Toledo, is just, it's just such a, a, an amazing thing to, to witness when I watch it. That is just so nice to hear. By the way, since you're in Chicago, did you see any of the um, you know, shooting of the Power Book Force while it was happening there, or was that in a completely different part? Yeah, and I'm, right now I'm editing something on uh, at Periscope, which is on the Cine Stage lot, which is like our our, our big film studio lot, and um, that the power is here. Um, Southside just got um, renewed uh, for another season, so that's really exciting. Um, there's so many. Uh, the Shy actually like shoots here and has an office here. There's so many exciting things happening in Chicago right now. Very, very true. Very, very true. And you are one of them. So go Monty Cole. <laughs> you guys, I hope that you've enjoyed um, watching, listening to um, this interview with Monty. Like, look out for him because I think it's going to be just like onward and upward from, from here. I just like really get that feeling. So I'm just so, so glad much. that you've had so much success to date and that the film was well received at Mammoth. Look out for it. Again, Sons of Toledo, like sad but in a good way i mean just because you see the the triumph of human spirit and i think when we see that in any film it's great and especially when you're seeing it in a sub demographic that you're not really used to seeing this type of emotion with it's just fascinating right fascinating. it's not even about i think when people talk about it they, there's a uh, i think there's some really powerful moments at the end that could really hit you um, but also, I think it's so much about the hope of that community and how yeah. strong and how strong they are to put the community on the back. And they're small enough that I truly believe that they can turn shit around. We will continue to watch. So, you guys, don't forget to click on the next uh, video right after this one. We're going to be bringing you more regarding Mammoth Film Festival. I am, as always, Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series right here at Film.io. Thanks for watching.